so much. Chanel. Oops, I always forget that. I always forgot about, I always forget about that recording part. Um, I was getting ready to say thank you, Chanel, and welcome everyone to another Michaels Community Classroom Paint Night Live. I'm Chris Williams, and tonight we are going to paint two pumpkins and a crow. So um, let's just go ahead and roll up our sleeves and get started, shall we? Um, if you want to go ahead and go ahead overhead, Chanel, that would be awesome. Thank you. So I prepared my canvas uh, earlier today and what I did was I used the free downloadable pattern that you found there on your supply list and I traced and transferred my pattern. I always like to make a special tracing paper design of my pattern. And then I use this because tracing paper is so easy to see through. Uh, using this as an example, you can see right through there. So it helps you place your design where you want on your surface. And I generally give you a, a transfer line here for the canvas size, but if you didn't have that, using a tracing paper to transfer your pattern is always the best way to go. So what I do first is I lay my tracing paper down and then I use an artist um, carbon paper that's called transfer paper. It's also called sometimes gray graphite. There is a business side and a uh, uh, right side and a wrong side. The right side we always call business side. This gray graphite is well used, my sheet here, but I always slip this. Once you kind of have your pattern where you want it, you could even use something like blue painter's tape to tape it down and hold it in place. I always slip the business side down onto my surface where you want. And then I use um, an artist stylus. This is a double-ended one with two different points, but you could also use a dead ballpoint pen if you don't have one of those and just transfer the main pattern lines. When I transferred mine, I'll bring my canvas up so you can see a little bit better. I just transferred basically the shape of the two pumpkins and the three leaves off to the side here. I did not do each of the individual little leaves. We're gonna paint those on separately. And then of course I added our little uh, crow there. So that's all the pattern that I have on mine. Uh, tonight I'm going to be using the Folk Art Matte Acrylics. So let's just go ahead and begin getting some of those colors out onto our palette. Um, the first color I have here is, I'm going to go ahead, I think I've got very little left in this bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and get out, um, oh gosh, Stephen, I might need to have you help me get an orange. This one has so little left. This Wait, is pure second. orange orange that I'm trying to get out of. Oh, my bottle is dead. Okay, so let's go ahead and get pure orange out. And then let's also get some moon yellow. And by the way, um, I think Stephen's going to get me some pure orange right now. But Stephen White is here in the studio with me tonight. And he is going to be helping moderate the class. So if you have any questions, or comments that you'd like to make, please let Stephen know. Thank you so much, Stephen. Please let Stephen know and he will try and either answer the questions directly for you or he will um, relay them to me. He'll also try and answer any comments or whatever. So um, what I have here is pure orange and I also put out a little bit of moon yellow. I'm going to add some red to our palette right now. And this is apple red. And then one more color I'm gonna add right now. And that is, Hold up my finished piece. Here we go. This is what we're painting tonight. And when I paint, I'll go ahead and put this right next to it. I was just kind of getting my colors out right now. The fourth color I'm gonna go ahead and add is some wicker white. And again, this is the Folk Art Matte Acrylics that I'm painting with tonight. But if you would rather paint with the Folk Art Multi-Surface, all of these four colors that I have out right now are available also in that formula. So it doesn't really matter whether you're painting with the Folk Art Matte or the Folk Art Multi-Surface. The first um, thing I wanted to do, yeah, go ahead, Stephen. Um, we had a question. Will it be a problem if uh, we transferred all of the details on our canvases too? No, no. Let's say, when we say details for everyone's sake, someone may be talking about all of these tiny little leaves or even all the little detail that's down here, maybe even these little berries that, and I'll bring that up so you can see it closer. That is not a problem at all. Uh, I was just trying to tell you, if you haven't yet transferred your pattern, you don't necessarily have to do all those details, but it's not a problem. You may still see them um, when we get to doing the background here around this area. Um, and you might be able to see those pattern lines uh, through the 
uh, blue and white and the green that we're gonna kind of feather in through here. If you don't, then we can let that dry. And if you feel like you need a pattern, we can transfer that back on top. And if you don't, I'm gonna show you, it's just a couple few little strokes. So you might not even need those patterns. I have a number 12 flat brush in my hand and I'm gonna go ahead and load it by stroking into the orange puddle that we have here. Again, this is pure orange. I'm pulling some of that color out from the puddle. I'm gonna flip my brush over and load the backside as well. Thank you all for joining me today. I hope you're gonna paint along and have a good time with me. And if not, follow along. This class is being recorded and you'll be able to paint along with the recording perhaps later at a more convenient time for you. But thank you very much for joining me. What I've done with this brush that's loaded with my pure orange is I'm gonna start painting this pumpkin here into the back. So what I've done right now is just mainly the center part. And I'm gonna go ahead and base in, again, still just using my pure orange, I'm gonna base in the other sections. And I'm trying to do this in long, smooth strokes. When you are painting this in and you're getting close to an area that's gonna be a separating one segment of the pumpkin to another segment, if you want, you can kind of give yourself a little tiny little cheat line. And when I say little cheat line, I mean doing something like this. I'm gonna hold it up. And you can see there's a tiny little space between the first section and the section, second section that I've painted. So if you want, you can kind of give yourself a little cheat. And we have a lot to cover tonight. So I'm gonna kind of move as quickly as I can. If you find that you are not able to keep up, uh, no worries at all. Remember the class is being recorded and you'll be able to catch up with the recording once it's posted to the Michaels channel on YouTube. Um, and Michaels is pretty- What is a Go good ahead. substitute um, for real brown? Uh, for real brown, we can use burnt umber. Okay. A really, any real dark, dark brown would be good. So real brown or burnt umber would work. Most everyone has burnt umber in their palette or their little supplies. So our pumpkin to the back actually has only three sections exposed. And then down here, don't forget, because the pumpkin's curving down, the bottom of the pumpkin has little three sections too. So you'll want to paint those in as well. While we still have the pure orange in our brush, after you have the back of your pumpkin done, let's move to this pumpkin in up front. And we're gonna do the same thing again. So we're gonna work our sections, one section at a time, just kind of painting in that pure orange. And if you can do a long, smooth stroke, I think you'll find that you'll be able to cover the area quicker, having less stroke work, and less time involved in painting each of the little sections. Don't try and go like this, pat, 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 to fill in all little sections. You'll get a lot more brush marks that way. Try and start at the top and stroke towards you, trying to make a full section all at one time. All right, I'm gonna continue kind of basing in my colors with this orange up front the pumpkin that sits up front that's all orange. So right now we're still painting just pure orange on both of our pumpkins, beginning with the pumpkin to the back and then working on the pumpkin sections to the front. And the pumpkin that sits in front, our smaller, squattier, shorter little pumpkin, he has one, two, three, four, five sections to him that are showing. We're not gonna worry about any of the little back ones sometimes that are showing in some pumpkin designs. Let's just go ahead and get this orange on here as quickly as we can. Again, the brush size I'm using is a number 12 flat. And Stephen, I appreciate you running that SOS emergency run for pure orange for me. No worries. As I was saying earlier, this is Stephen White, who's in the studio with me tonight. And if you have any questions, shout them out because Stephen's gonna be here to help us. He's part of our A team here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let these two areas um, that we've painted already dry. So I'm just gonna rinse that orange out of my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and add one more color to our palette. And that color is Thicket. If you don't have thicket, you could use sap green. Thicket is a really dark 
uh, beautiful basic green color. And I just kind of rinsed my brush a little bit. I'm kind of pinching the orange out. If I still have a little orange in the brush, I'm not going to worry about it. What we're gonna do with this thicket using the same brush, we're gonna pull that color out, load both sides of that number 12 flat brush. And we're gonna look at our pumpkin stems here. There's just maybe a slice of the stem showing on this pumpkin that's our back pumpkin. And this short squatty one here, it's not only the stem, but it's also kind of like the uh, perch, if you will, for our little crow or our little bird. So let's go ahead and just kind of base those in as well. And again, try and use long, smooth strokes if you can. Now, when you're painting this one here, you might ask, am I carrying the pattern around to the side of the canvas? On this design right here, I did not carry my designs all the way over and wrap the canvas. I chose to paint the whole sides of my canvas all black when I did that when I was all completely done. So what I'm doing now is just painting the top surface of the canvas. I think I saw someone saying they wanted to see the it closer. There you go. All right, so I'm still working with that number 12 flat brush and I'm working with it loaded with our thicket. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of tap that color in on the actual stem of our pumpkin. And then on this one, again, like I said, we're going to curl it around so that it kind of then becomes like a perch for our little bird. And let it kind of be a little curvy. Follow the pattern lines. And that's all we're going to do right there. While we still have this green in our brush, let's go ahead and base coat these three big leaves that are right down here. So I'm gonna bring it up so you can see closely. I'm talking about these three leaves right here. And the best way to base coat those or to undercoat those, let me just share with you if you wanna look up here a moment. We're gonna think about one leaf at a time and kind of uh, start, think about, if you will, let me do this for you. I'm using my chisel edge. You don't have to add uh, the center of the leaf there, but let's pretend each of these leaves has got that center stem, okay? Just imaginarily think of that center stem. You're gonna stroke towards that stem. So on this leaf right here, we're stroking from the outside on the left here, stroking towards that center. And then we're gonna go up a little bit higher and stroke towards that center. So we're kind of filling in one half of the brush just by starting on the outside edge, stroking towards that center. And that's what we wanna do. When we get to the top of that, turn your brush so that you're now up on its uh, chisel edge. And that's gonna give you the point of this leaf. And you're gonna pull down and then stroke in. So it's a very, very simple way to fill in a leaf. And you can do that just by pulling your brush in the right strokes or the right directions. So again, we're gonna pretend that that imaginary stem is there and stroke in, stroke in. I'm gonna use the chisel edge of my brush and then pull in the rest of these little strokes down here. This brush has got a little bit of a weird end to it. I'm gonna change and get a different one. And my last brush is, um, I'm sorry, my last leaf is done exactly the same way. So I'm going to pretend that I'll just go ahead and do it for you. Let's pretend there's a, there's a center vein or where the stem is coming into the leaf. And we're going to stroke towards that, stroke towards that until you get all the way up to the tip. Use the chisel edge, pull down, and then kind of pull over. And that's the most easiest way to base in a leaf instead of trying to pat, 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 and fill in every single little stroke. So we're gonna let those kind of set up and dry as well. All right, I'm gonna rinse that green out of my brush and just set this brush aside a minute. Actually, I may go ahead and use this brush because my other one seems to have a worn hair on it. And so now what I'm going to do is pick up, um, I'm gonna go back, I found a new 12. I'm gonna use a number 12 flat brush. My pumpkins are pretty dry. If yours are not, feel free to get your hair dryer out and you can kind of start beginning to set this color down by drying it. 
Um, I'll tell you what, let's go back to our bird. If you wanna wait and let your pumpkins dry without drying it, let's let these dry. Let's go ahead and base in our bird. And our little crow is based in with black and the black that was on the supply list is licorice. So you can get out a little licorice. If you don't have licorice, you can use um, pure black. And what we're gonna do is we are going to paint our entire bird black with the exception of, I'm gonna bring him back up so you can see him close. His little eye and his beak are painted with pure orange. So it might be a good idea to go ahead and get that eye in place first. So using a one inch uh, or a number one script liner, load that little liner brush with your pure orange. And with that, you can go ahead and paint in the beak and just kind of use your little pattern line there to make sure you get it in nice and smooth. There's my beak painted. And also with the little eye, it's just a little circle. We're gonna paint that in with the pure orange as well. It might be easier to have those in place rather than trying to paint the orange circle on top of the black head. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to that number 12 flat brush and I'm gonna go ahead and paint in the whole rest of the bird, all solid with our black. And then we'll let that dry before we add some details. So I'm using that number 12 flat brush. And if you need to, for com your comfort level to go a little bit smaller, go down to a number eight if that helps you. Fill that brush good and full of your black and I'm gonna start out at the tail working towards the head area. The little tail, I'm gonna show you first. It's just a wispy little end, kind of think of a V shape. If you think, here's, here's our V. Think of a V shape and we're gonna use the chisel edge of our brush. And we are going to just kind of pull some of those from the very tip of the tail, stroking towards the head we're pulling in just a few little uh, tail feathers. So Chris, um, yes. why, while you're doing that, why don't um, you name the colors that you have on your palette so far? Cause I think we are uh, having some- behind? Yeah. Yeah. What I have here starting on my left, going towards my right, I have pure orange. Then I have uh, medium yellow. The next color over is apple red. Then I have white and you can use wicker white or titanium white. My darker green here is thicket. If you don't have thicket, I was mentioning that uh, sap green would also work. And the last color that I added is the color we're working on for our bird right now, which is a black. I'm using licorice, but you could also use pure black. I hope that helps everyone. All right, so now going back to basing in the body of our bird, we're just gonna take that black and I, I said, we're gonna start on the tail. Let me show you what I've done so far. It's just a wispy little edge of the tail. And then I'm going to go ahead and just fill in the whole shape of that bird. And if you have transferred the little wing shape like I did on mine, we're gonna go ahead and cover that over. We can paint that freehand. And I'm just using long, smooth strokes to kind of fill in that area. This is again, just solid black. And my black is um, the licorice and, or you could use the pure black. I'm using a number 12 flat brush to base in the shape of our bird. And when you get close up to his head, if it, and you wanna work around that orange of his eye, feel free to switch to a smaller brush if that helps you. And, or just be sure to turn your work so that you can fill in those areas really well. I'm just carefully going around my eye and now I'll go around the outside of my head. And then don't forget our little bird has got uh, two little legs. They're almost like two little triangles at the bottom of his belly area here. And then there are two little um, skinny parts of his legs. So let's go ahead and put those in as well. There's almost like two little triangles 
And when I say triangles, I'm, I'm going to hold mine up here. I mean like this. It's almost like two little points at the bottom of his belly. That's the top part of his legs. And then the bulk of his legs is going to be like skinny little sticks. And I'm going to, going to use my chisel edge to paint those in. So for those of you that are following along with me, what we did was we started with our number 12 flat brush and we painted our back pumpkin, all three sections. Then we painted our forward pumpkin, again, pure orange, all five sections. We added the thicket or the dark green for our stems, these three leaves. Then we went back to our pure orange for both the beak and the eye of our bird. And last, what I just finished doing was we based in the bird with our number 12 flat brush and we used black. Any questions up to this point? We're just kind of getting these colors laid in and now the fun begins. So now we're gonna start working with the pure orange again and we're also gonna work with the medium yellow and some of the red. So I think we'll add just one more color and that will be our brown as well. So I'm working with the real brown. If you don't have real brown, any nice medium value dark brown would work. And as I mentioned, you could use uh, burnt umber if you like. There we go. All right. So now what I want to do is pretty much work with the um, back pumpkin first. I'm going to bring mine up real close so you can see. I got it pretty dark between my segments. I'm, so I'm gonna start on these back segments here and we're gonna go ahead and use some of the orange and some of the brown to kind of break up and divide these sections. And then this kind of, I'm gonna bring it up so you can see real close. This is actually kind of like a blush of red that we're gonna add on top of our sections once we get them nice and shaded. So I'm going to use what I call my local color, my base color first and I'm gonna load the brush with the orange. That was our base of our pumpkins and that's pure orange again. And then I'm gonna come over to my brown and I am going to side load or pick up just a little bit of that brown on my flat brush. So I'm gonna get a brush that has mostly orange across with a little bit of the brown on just one side. It's what we call side loading. And I'm blending on the palette there to get my colors well blended on the brush before I begin shading on my pumpkin. So I'm gonna make sure you see that. What I'm gonna do is start on this most furthest back section, keeping the brown next to our section line. And this is where I am going to pat, pat, pat that color onto this last section, keeping the brown up next to the section line. So go ahead and begin just kind of patting that color on. We're starting to shade our sections here. Again, that's the brush that's loaded with our base color or our local color, which is our pure orange, and then some of our brown. My brown is real brown. You could also use burnt umber. Every so often I'm stopping to reload that brush before I move on. The second section, I'm gonna shade on the second section, but I'm gonna keep that dark brown next to my dividing line one more time, dividing the center section of this pumpkin from the base of the rest of the pumpkin. So I'm keeping that brown right next to it, just like we did our first one, kind of patting that color on in place. And again, this is a brush that's loaded with our orange, pure orange, and some of our brown, whichever brown you might have. So I'm kind of shading right along that line. And then I'm also gonna shade where this pumpkin is behind our pumpkin to the front. So that's a little bit of brown and I'm keep patting that color on. We're gonna make sure that we kind of shade by short little patty strokes. Now with this pumpkin that's to the back, remember we have three little sections that are showing here um, and you want to kind of work these little sections as well. So again, keeping that brush loaded with our pure orange and a little bit of our brown, whichever nice warm brown you choose, you're going to keep that shading right up next to the section line of these small little sections here at the bottom. 
So divide up your sections. And then besides dividing the sections, we're gonna come back and add some shading where the pumpkin in the front overlaps the pumpkin to the back. So for right now, I just, I'm holding mine up. I just have the two shaded here along those section lines. Now with that part of the brown on my brush, I'm going to come back and I'm going to turn my work so that I'm still pulling towards me and I'm gonna pat some of that brown on this pumpkin to the back, but right up next to this line that separates the two and keeps one pumpkin to the back. And we're gonna let this part dry before we start introducing that red that I told you we were gonna use. This pumpkin also can have a little bit of shading in this center um, section. This would be like the middle of the pumpkin. So I'm only gonna add the brown shading at the base of the pumpkin here. So let's just pat some of that color on. Again, the brown is to the bottom of the pumpkin. And I'm just kind of pat, pat, patting it on, trying to keep it smooth, but also kind of shading the bottom of that pumpkin. All right, now we can go ahead and start doing the same thing with our pumpkin to the front. So load up that brush again with your pure orange and your brown, and you can begin painting and shading again along those section lines, keeping the brown, that whatever brown you're using, keeping your brown to that pumpkin shaded section. So shade on one section of the pumpkin right up next to the separation line between it and its neighbor section. So we're shading and we're gonna do this on all of the sections of this pumpkin. And what I do is I kind of load up my brush quite often and blend on the palette between each time you go back to your canvas. And I try and pat that color on as best as I can. And then if it looks a little irregular to you, you can come back and just brush over it one more time with a long smooth stroke. And that will help blend the two colors together too. You might find it easier to always stroke towards you. So after you've done, perhaps like I've done mine here, the two right side sections, you have to either flip your brush over to keep the brown next to the lines on this side here. So you can stroke this way again, pulling towards you, but you have to remember to flip that brush around. If it's easier to always have that brown on the left side of the brush, then turn your work upside down. And what you're gonna do is then repeat those same strokes, keeping the brown right up next to the division line between our sections. But you're working kind of like with the pumpkin upside down now. You always wanna keep that brown as our division line between our sections of our pumpkin. How are we doing, Stephen, any questions? I think we are caught up. Okay, great. I know sometimes it's hard to kind of get settled in a Zoom class when, when a lot of people are joining all at one time. So I appreciate each of you being with me tonight. I saw when some of you were joining, you were automatically in the chat, letting us know from where you are tuning in. And that's always fun. I saw someone was from the Cayman Islands, Stephen. I thought that was really fun tonight. Yeah, we love it to uh, love to see where everybody is watching from. That's a super cool thing for us to know. Yes, it is. Okay, so what I've done on all of my sections, I've done the pure orange and my brown. My brown was the real brown and I completed all of my little sections. Now what we wanna do is start highlighting our uh, pumpkins. So I'm gonna use my pure orange one more time and I'm gonna start side loading into the yellow that we have here. And I have got the medium yellow. I want just a nice, bright, cheery yellow. So whatever bright, cheery yellow you have, it will work for us. And with that cheery yellow, I'm gonna add that as the highlight following our little section lines. And I'm gonna start putting the yellow close to the section line 
And I'm just kind of working that in to kind of create the little bit of a highlight that you see here that's going on. So again, I still have the pure orange in my brush and I'm adding the yellow right up next to those lines. And I'm kind of blending that out. And as I come down, I'm just kind of lightly blend it into the shading that I have here. So this is an example right here. I've started some yellow and I've gone all the way down the center section of our big pumpkin. I'm gonna do the same thing here, going to the next section. And I'm gonna have that yellow right up next to that division line and then just kind of pat it out. If you find you're not getting bright enough and you want perhaps your pumpkin to be a little bit brighter, on the same side of the brush that you've added your yellow, you could even add just a tiny little bit of the white and just have a little bit of white added to that same side as the yellow. I don't wanna to do too much brightness on this pumpkin that's to the back, but if you wanted to, you could add just a little bit of white and see how much that brightened that up just a little bit more between section number two and the last section at the back. So let's go ahead and begin highlighting now our pumpkin to the front. And what I'm gonna do is exactly the same thing. I'm going to highlight keeping my yellow side of the brush right up next to where we put that dark uh, shading for the section. If you wanna make it a little bit brighter, add a little bit more white to your brush, and then you can stroke over and create a little bit more of a white highlight. You'll do this on all of your sections. So you're always gonna use the pure orange and the white, I mean the pure orange and the yellow. And then if you want to, you can even add a little bit of the white, kind of blending that in so that you have one side of your section kind of shaded, the other side of your section of your pumpkin has been highlighted. And some of you might be thinking, why did I not do the background first? I think because of our time frame strengths today, painting a background can be very simply, quickly done after we get the base of our painting on. So I'm not worried about the background. We're gonna do the detail of our two pumpkins and our little bird first, and then we'll worry about the background and then we'll do the detail of the foliage. This last section on my front pumpkin, and I say the last section, that's the last section I'm working on that's on the uh, left-hand side of the pumpkin, the pumpkin that is on top of the back pumpkin, if that all ma makes sense, I'm adding a little bit more white to that section to make it pop from the difference that we see in the back of the back pumpkin that is mostly dark. I'm gonna turn my pumpkin around or my painting around upside down so that I can now add the highlight on what is the right side of the pumpkin. So I'm just kind of working it in, always making sure I still have some of my base color, which is our pure orange in my brush, adding the yellow when I need to, to kind of come along the highlight side and then adding white on top of that if I need to give it a little bit more boost for my highlight. None of this takes a lot of time. If you've been painting a while and kind of know how to hold your brush or know your brush stroke work, try and work uh, long, smooth strokes. You'll find it much, much easier than trying to do short little choppy strokes. You got a question? Yeah, sorry, I've been uh, choking on water over here. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, will would it be a good idea if you were going to paint this later to do the background first? Um, I guess you could, but I tend to like to paint on the canvas itself only because um, it'd be easy to do the black on top of a background. But sometimes oranges are a little bit less um, high, have a little bit less high. They're more transparent in color. So if you had a dark background, like behind our pumpkins here, there's a lot of dark green and brown and some dark green around here. It might take more layers to get the base color on here first. Gotcha. So you could, but it might take a little bit longer effort to get your basing in. Awesome, thank you. Uh-huh. 
it's not hard to paint the background around these large shapes. And we'll do that in just a little bit. Now what I've done on mine is I've got my orange done on the back of the pumpkin. I've got my shading done. I've got my highlighting done. I've did the same thing to the front pumpkin and this is still wet. My back pumpkin is now starting to set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start blushing on and I'm gonna bring this up real close so you can see again, all of this kind of feathering color in here. This is actually our apple red on top of the colors that we already have down. I do wanna make sure that yours is completely dry before you blush. So I'm gonna to have to wait to blush my center pumpkin. But what I'm gonna do is I cleaned my brush. I'm still working with the number 12 flat and I have really pinched my brush well on my paper towel here. I've not only kind of pinched out some of the color that might've been in there, but I also pinched out the moisture that's in my brush. My brush is pretty much dry right now. And I'm going to fully load that brush by pulling some of that red out. When I say fully load, I mean the full width of the brush, but I'm not putting a tremendous amount of paint on that brush. You can see as I'm pulling this color out, it's very, very little. And I'm gonna hold this up so that you can see my paintbrush here does not have a lot of paint on it. Just very, very, almost a dry brush of red. What we're going to do is kind of go in here and blush on using that flat of the brush and just kind of brush out some of that red. I'm starting here, you can see on this one here, I'm starting here in this little V area and I'm brushing and stroking up, just kind of patting some of that color on and I'm letting it kind of fall where it may. I am not trying to do a specific brush stroke. I'm not trying to blend it in. I'm just kind of dry brushing a blush, if you will, on this pumpkin. And I'm gonna do that on the section that's to the back as well. Starting at the bottom or the base of those sections, and I'm just kind of patting some of that color up. If you feel like you're not getting enough color on because of you, I did caution you to use a dry brush, go back and add a little bit more paint, but again, just a little bit at a time. We're gonna do the same thing at the bottom sections of our large pumpkin. These two little sections back here, again, we kind of have another V, upside down V that we're kind of blushing this red on and we're kind of patting it out a little bit. It's just a blush of color. And then in the center of our pumpkin here, we're gonna, I'll bring this one up again close. So you can see there's a blush of red here at the base and it's kind of going up a little bit, just a little bit like almost like a, a half of a moon or half of a C stroke, backwards C stroke here. So we're gonna keep that brush kind of flat to the surface and kind of just brush with a very light touch, some of that color going up. So I just did it on mine here and you can see the red is based here and I kind of patted that up using the flat of the brush on my surface. I did not paint, paint, paint. I'm not going like this painting, I'm going flat to the surface. And when our pumpkin to the center is dry, mine's still wet. I don't wanna put that red on right now. We're gonna let that kind of set up. Let's go ahead and move on to our stems. Right now we have them based in with our thicket. Well, what we're gonna do is, I, I still have the red in my brush, but I'm not worried about cleaning that out. I'm gonna keep that red in my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of our green. And then I'm also going to drag my brush over here to my brown and pick up a little bit of the brown. So I have a brush that has both green and brown in it and whatever residual of our red. And I'm going to just start pulling up using the chisel edge of my brush. I'm going to pull this up so you can see that I just started pulling up little chisel marks, little like uh, determining like a little twig type shape. I'm using just the chisel edge of the brush that has both the green and the brown. Again, that's my thicket and my real brown. And I'm just pulling out along the stem. This kind of helps give it that look as though it's twisted a little bit. 
So Chris, this isn't a question, but this is something that I wanted to share because I think it is a great idea. Um, this is for from Sam. They said, for any technique that is fairly new to me, I work it up on scratch paper until I feel like I have it down well enough uh, that it will not ruin my piece. Oh, that's awesome. And I think that's a great idea um, for anybody who has uh, seen techniques in this class that they're a little intimidated by, maybe not super comfortable with just yet. Uh, so I wanted to share that. Yeah, that's great, Stephen. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, you know, every teacher has their own little tips and techniques, little tricks that they like to do. I tend to teach a lot to beginners, uh, but I also like to share with you a few more tricks and tips of maybe something that you haven't yet tried. So um, I think it's good. A lot of times I know what a lot of people do as well is on these Michaels classes, because it's such a rush to try and get everything done in an hour. A lot of times people just watch it first and paint along on the replay. So maybe that's another good way to do it too, if you are a beginner with tuning in. So my two stems have my green in it. They have some streaks. I'll bring it up really close so you can see. They're pretty dark, but I have some streaks in there of the dark right now. Now what I'm gonna do, well, I still have that brush that's dirty brush. It's loaded with my green and my brown. I'm gonna just, pull out a little bit of white. I'm not worried about any of the other colors that might be in there. And now I'm going to add, I'm gonna show you mine up close, some little bit of a lighter streak in both of our little stems. So starting on our big stem here, we're just gonna kind of pull up some of these streaky marks and it, it's nothing special, it's nothing really fancy. It's just kind of helping us think that maybe there's some texture to that stem. And do make sure that you kind of curve here at the bend of our little one that's supporting our bird. And that's about all I'm going to do on these little stems. I'm holding mine up real close if you want to see. It's just using that chisel edge of the brush. My brush had the green, the thicket, it had the real brown, and it had some wicker white in it. What I'm going to do now is I am going to go back to these three leaves. And then we'll start in on our background and I'll, we'll come back and blush the, mine's still a little tender. I'm gonna wait and let that dry a little bit more. So our little leaves here, we've already based them in green. So I'm gonna fill my brush. Again, I'm still working with that same number 12 flat brush and I'm using the same green. So this is Thicket. I've loaded both sides of my brush with Thicket. And now I'm going to side load with a little bit of our brown. So I'm gonna have a brush that has mostly green, but a little bit of brown to it. And what we're gonna do is kind of think about those strokes that we did on those leaves before, and we're gonna keep doing that same motion. Um, this time I'm going to, on my chisel edge, go ahead and pull in what would be our center vein or our, our center stem. And that's all done. I just did it on the one closest to the pumpkin right now. So what I did, I had my brush loaded with my green, side loaded into the brown. I blended well on my palette and I'll do one up here if I can't hold it up. I'm going to, on the chisel edge, just kind of pull from the base into the leaf towards the tip. And I'll do the same thing on all three leaves so that we're kind of pulling from the stem out to the base of the leaf. Now what we're going to do is we're going to keep that side of the brush that has the brown in it towards the base of the leaf. So if I'm going to retrace my steps and I'm gonna to pull towards that center, I've got a now brown base on one half of my leaf. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other half. And this time I'm gonna pull up. So I now have a brown, kind of like a V, if you will, so we're darkening the bases of our leaves and we can do all three because they're small. We can do all three at one time. So again, that we have our brush loaded with our base color green, our thicket and our brown. And I'm just kind of pulling in those strokes right there. One part of our leaf is gonna be dark. The other part of our leaf is going to be the light half of the leaf. As we look at our three right here, the bottom section of each of our leaves. So on this first leaf out here, 
the leaf that is closest to my finger, the section of the leaf that's closest to my finger is going to be the dark part. So what I'm gonna do, again, I still have my brush loaded with the green and a little bit of the brown. The side of the, the brush that has the brown in it is gonna be placed right up next to that little uh, stem or vein that we pulled in and we're gonna pull out. So let's do that on all of our leaves. So for the middle one, I'm gonna think that the right half of my leaf is my dark one and I'm pulling out. And then for the same thing for this last one, I'm gonna think to the right side is my dark. And I'm just pulling out. So now I have leaves that look like they're very dark on one side of the leaf. And I'm gonna wipe this color out of my brush because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna lighten the other half of the leaf. So I got rid of the brown in my brush and now I'm just filling the brush with again, our base color, which is our green. And I'm going to now pull in and pick up a little bit of white on that brush. So I have a brush that has mainly green, but a little bit of white on one tip. And the white, we're now gonna retrace those strokes stroking towards the center vein. And I'm just kind of pulling that down. So we have a brush that is loaded with our green and our white. And I, I'm just kind of retracing those steps and kind of pulling that in towards the center. And this is just a very light little stroke. So now I have leaves that are definitely lighter on one side, darker on the other side. We'll let that dry. And when we do our blushing, I, when we do the blushing of our front pumpkin, we can blush a little bit of red on those leaves. But right now, let's go ahead and start working on our bird. So what we have right now is our black background. We have our orange eye and we have our beak painted. And the orange eye and the beak were all done with the pure orange. So what we wanna do now is give our bird a little bit of a wing. I'll bring mine up so you can see it close. That wing is very, very simply done. We're going to take our uh, number 12 flat brush and we're gonna fill that brush good and full with our base color, which is our black. I'm using licorice or pure black, whichever black you have. And then we're gonna side load and get a little bit of our white. So I'm blending on the palette here with a corner tipped in white. Most of my brush is with the black. And all I'm gonna do with this stroke right here, it's a very, very, very simple wing. When you look at mine here, I'm gonna hold my brush up here. I'm gonna keep the white part of my brush to the bottom of the bird and I'm gonna start right here about his shoulder and I'm gonna do a little like upside down uh, rainbow shape and stop before we get to the tail. So that's all it is, is just a little, if you turn it this way, it's like the letter C. So well, let's go ahead and add a wing to our bird. And that brush is loaded with mostly our black and side loaded in white and then blended on the palette so that you get kind of a beautiful gray on just a little bit of that uh, brush. I'm gonna add a little bit more black to mine here and just kind of pat that on. And like I said, stop before you get too far up the wing. So there's mine right here. We're just giving him a very soft little wing. And then the only other thing we're gonna do to our bird, keeping him very simple tonight, we're gonna put a little bit of a red blush on his beak where the beak meets the black of his head. So if you want to, you can add a little orange to your brush and then pick up a little bit of the red. This is apple red and pure orange. I'm blending on the palette and I wanna keep the red side of my brush right on the beak, but right up next to the black. And I'm just kind of patting where those two colors meet. So again, it's the pure orange, the base of his beak. I'll turn it right side for you. And ooh, there we go. And I'm putting a little bit of a red right on the beak where it meets the black of his head. So I'm gonna do mine a little bit darker so it shows up. Mine, it looks pretty good here in person, but I'm gonna do a little darker 
so you can see it a little bit more. All right. Now what we're going to do for his eye, we have right now a big circle of our pure orange. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a liner brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of water here out to the side. I wanna thin down my black just a little bit. And I'm gonna bring a little bit of my black paint out to where I have some water just to make the paint a little bit more fluid and it'll be easier to use it on the liner brush. So right now we have an eye that has just a circle of orange. So that's what we have, just our base of our orange. Inside that orange base, we're gonna make a smaller, leaving a rim of orange, we're gonna make a smaller black circle and paint that in. Oh, that probably doesn't show very well. I tried to demonstrate on the side here. Let me bring my palette up. So if you look there, we're just going to make a smaller little circle, solid black inside the orange. And I'll bring my sample up so you can see this up close again. If you want to take a look at my bird, we're just making a black circle inside the orange circle. So we're just going to paint that. And I'm sorry if you, if you can't really see what I'm doing, but I need to see what I'm doing too. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to add just a little bit more pure orange on one side of my little circle here. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a tiny little white highlight. So using that same brush, but clean out the black and just use the very tip of the brush to put a little dot and think about the face of a clock and think about uh, maybe, oh, say one o'clock and just put a tiny little white dot. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna get some new colors out onto our palette so we can start putting some color really quickly to our background. And if your white is drying up, get yourself some fresh white. You're gonna need white, you're gonna need cobalt hue, and you're also going to need a little bit of classic green. So those three colors are what's gonna make up our background to start with. Okay. And I'm going to switch to a three quarter inch flat brush. And I'm gonna give myself a little bit more white right over here. So what you're gonna do is you're going to primarily use a lot of white in the background here. Let's go ahead and start in this corner here and work towards our pumpkin and towards our crow. I'm gonna fill that three quarter inch flat brush with my white and I'm gonna tip just a tiny bit of it into our blue. And our blue is the cobalt uh, hue, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, cobalt hue. And I, so I have a brush that's loaded like this. I have mostly white with just a little bit of blue. And I am just gonna start what we call slip slapping. I am going to slap that paint on and change my brush direction quite a bit. And you want to add more white if you want it to be lighter blue. If you want it to be a darker blue, then add less white. Keep using the color. And you're just kind of slip slapping this color on to kind of create the color combination that you want. It's not a complete opaque solid. I'm holding mine up now so you can see it's very brush strokey. It's, it's lots of pigment and lots of color brushed on in a variety of stroke directions so that you end up with a surface that has a very modeled brush strokey look or effect. Every so often pick up a little bit more of the blue if you want. When we get down to this corner here we have blue but then we're going to blush some of our greens on top of this area here. When you come up close to an item that or a section that you've already painted, for instance our leaves here, just be very careful, just go, you can do it, just go right up next to those areas and just kind of tap that color on. Again, you're kind of working in a slip slappy motion, lots of different colors. Right now I'm primarily working with my white and my blue, but I'm being very careful as I work around the shape of my leaves here. 
you'll see the darkness in the bottom of our project that will blush on on top once we get the blues down. So I'm just very quickly using that three quarter inch flat brush and I'm slip slapping some of this background on. And if you work quickly, you can kind of just keep moving on. Be careful working around your pumpkin here. And we're just gonna keep on going. I hope you all are having a lot of fun tonight. We're gonna keep moving and getting our background on. I think I picked up a little bit too much blue there. Be careful as you're going around your bird. Remember to go in between his tail as well as under his belly and just kind of keep slapping that color on, allowing the colors to intermix. And this is why we use a larger brush because it does let the work go so much faster for you. And pick up a little bit more white if you want it to be lighter in value, pick up a little bit more blue if you want some more shading. Use those slip slappy strokes to kind of give you a modeled effect. And go between his tail here. If you need to turn your work upside down, hold your canvas in different directions. And very, very carefully, Keep going around the shape of the bird. And as we move towards this upper corner here, towards our upper left corner, then what you can do is you can start introducing some of our classic green. Be careful as you go around the stem of your pumpkin, but you can start keep using some of the white, the greens, and a little bit of the blues and then kind of let them intermingle here in this spot where some of our greenery is gonna be. Oops, I got a little on my bird here. There we go. So again, it's just our whites, our classic green and our cobalt hue. And it just gives you a very soft modeled effect. Not a lot of detail, but it does give you a nice effect when, for some interest when we're all said and done. Careful around his beak. There we go. I pretty much have mine uh, done here. What we want to do is to darken some of these areas. So I'm gonna pick up a little classic green on the side of my brush, and I'm gonna add some of that classic green now towards the bottom, just kind of blushing some of that color on. The main color down here is gonna be thicket, but I'm just adding a little bit of this green first before we go into the thicket. And I'm gonna get a little bit of white and bring some of that green up into this area as well. Just kind of blending that with our white. And like I said, we want very much a brush strokey effect. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna start bringing in some of our thicket. So the thicket was our darker green, like the green that we did for our um, leaves and our stems. With that, we're gonna go pretty much at the base of our pumpkins and bring some of that thicket around. So I've got thicket right up underneath our pumpkins. And we're gonna go very carefully around the base of them and kind of pull out towards the other area here. If you want, you can even darken it down a little bit more use some of the brown on the corner of the brush to kind of help set those pumpkins down onto uh, a, a surface or a ground area. Oh, somebody's asking here, wouldn't it be much easier to do this before you do the pumpkins and the crows? I've already talked about that. And yes, you can do the whole background first, but we don't have the time for that tonight. 
If you did all that, you'd have to make sure that you thoroughly dried your, your pumpkin area and your back, I'm, I'm sorry, dried the pumpkin before you traced and transferred the pumpkins on and so on. This way we were just working around them because of time's sake tonight. If you ever choose to paint this one again, perhaps you'd like to do it that way. But for the time's sake of tonight's class, we went ahead and just decided that we would work around them. And I'll be honest with you, I quite paint this way a lot of the time. Let's start adding our little filler uh, stems and leaves here in between our two pumpkins here. I'm going to work with my liner brush and I'm gonna bring some of that water over here and pull out the thicket. With the thicket, I am going to use the liner brush. I'm thinning it with some water. I wanna make sure that paint is a little more fluid and I am going to pull out three stems. So you can work from the center and pull out or you can stroke towards your pumpkins, whichever is easier for you. If you still see your pattern line, if you've transferred those basic lines, follow those as best you can, but we're just kind of pulling out a little line. And I'm gonna pull out three lines, which will be our three stems for our little filler leaves here. So I've got three stems pulled out here on the top of mine. We'll do the same thing while we have this in our brush and we're gonna pull out a couple at the bottom. So you're gonna start here from the base of the pumpkin and pull out, making your stems as long as you want or following the patterns. And then I'm gonna pull one in this direction. So I have my liner brush, thinned licorice, and I pulled my stems out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to switch to a smaller flat brush. And I have here a number six flat. And I am going to load that brush with a little bit of my thicket, the dark green. And then what I'm going to do is add my yellow. The yellow again is medium yellow. So I'm just gonna pull some of that yellow into my brush. So I have a flat brush that is mostly with my thicket, my dark green. And then I'm also adding the moon, yellow, not moon yellow, I'm sorry, medium yellow. And what I'm gonna do is to start these leaves, I'm going to hold my brush so that the chisel edge is straight up and down. And I'm gonna to touch a corner of the brush down onto the surface. And I'm just gonna do like a smush. I'm smushing it down and I'm pulling a little bit. So we've got a brush that has thicket and has our yellow. And on this one closest to our tallest pumpkin, I'm just gonna at the very tip, do a smush and pull, smush and pull, smush and pull. So I'm making a tiny, tiny little leaf by using the corner of my flat brush I'm smushing and pulling. And these are pairs of leaves on either side. And again, this is our thicket and our yellow. Thicket is the darker green. The yellow is our medium yellow. And I'm just doing pairs of leaves just simply by keeping the corner of my brush down and I'm touching and smushing. I'm gonna wipe that brush. The next row or stem is different color. We're gonna do our green, which is again, our thicket, but we're also gonna use white. So I'm gonna pull out some white. So we have a white brush or a brush that's loaded with our thicket and our white. Same exact leaf. We're starting at the top using the corner only and we're smushing. So this gives us a different color by adding the white and the thicket together. I'll pull this up so you can see close. Our first one was more a fresher green leaf because of the yellow in it. This one's more almost like a, um, oh, maybe a eucalyptus leaf color. So there's fewer leaves on that one. And then our last stem that we have that's closest to our crow, we're going to begin first with our, our green. So that's gonna be our thicket. And then we're going to use the orange. So we're gonna load with some pure orange. We'll do the same little stroke and we're gonna start at the tip and push down. So we have green and orange together in this 
<coughs> excuse me, set of leaves. And I'm holding it up right now. It looks very much like an autumn leaf with that orange and the green mixed together. So again, just make pairs of leaves as you come down. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're using the two on this side, we are going to, on this, <clears throat> excuse me, this very bottom foliage here, that's primarily our green. Again, that's our thicket. And we're gonna use a little bit of our brown. I'm using the real brown. I think some of you are using burnt umber. So this is gonna be a darker leaf. And again, we're starting out at that tip. So this is our green and our brown, same stroke. We're using the corner of the brush to touch down first, apply some pressure to kind of, like I said, smush it. And I'm doing one on the left side of the stem, one on the right side of the stem, making pairs of leaves until you get to the base of that stem. And that's, this is a very, very simple little fall foliage, a very simple little ferny type leaf. <clears throat> so each of our stems that we've done so far have been the same technique, but different colors. And they give you a completely variety or a different look of leaves. <coughs> Excuse me. We have one more set of leaves to do. And that's this one right up front here <clears throat> that has a lot more orange and red to it, has a little bit of green too. What we're gonna do is load our brush with our green and then kind of brush some of that off. We want green in the brush, but not a tremendous amount. Now I'm gonna stroke into our pure orange, but I'm also gonna stroke into the red. And with this leaf, we're gonna pull out from the stem. We're not gonna pull in like we've been doing. If you found that stroke very, very easy, then continue with it. But what I'm doing right now is I'm starting at the tip and I'm kind of holding my brush so that the tip is almost on an angle and I'm gonna to touch down, apply some pressure and then pull and lift. So I get a very small little leaf, <coughs> excuse me, and do, Reload your brush as often as you need to. These do not necessarily have to touch the stem. <coughs> Sorry. I think air got in my throat here. <clears throat> and so I'm again using a little bit of thicket. I'm also using some of the pure orange and the apple red and making kind of a fall leaf, pushing outwards from the stem. I'm just touching with the full flat of the brush down, but kind of on an angle. And I'm pulling that brush out. And again, it's pairs of leaves all the way down that stem. And we're just gonna keep going. There we go. The last little thing that we added to this section down here is a little twig with some little berries. Let me show you up close. Our twig is gonna be painted with our liner brush. So you can get your liner brush ready. Hey, Chris. Then, yeah. Sorry, I lost um, internet connection for a second, but I am obviously right next door to you. So I was able to follow along to everything that's going on. Um, yeah. So I had a question that I wanted to catch up on that somebody sure. asked earlier. Can you give sure. us a reminder of what the colors of the leaves on the right are? These right here. Yeah. Yes, yes. The bottom twig or the bottom leaf here, this, our stems, were, both of the stems were pulled out using a liner brush and thicket. But awesome. then this one, down, yeah, this one down here, the leaves were the thicket and the brown, whichever brown you're using. So they're a very dark green brown little leaf. And this was the one where I stroked in towards using the corner of the brush and just did a smash and pull kind of a thing. This one here that has a lot more orange and red to it, maybe a little bit of green. I used the same brush again, our number four flat. And I loaded the brush with a little bit of our green, which was our thicket. I also loaded it with pure orange and with red. And I started my stroke here close to the stem and I pulled out. So I kind of did a reverse type look 
rather than this look here, or this, this one is the same look as these over here. So these were pulled in towards the stem. This ones were pulled away from the stem. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm thinning my liner brush and I'm thinning the thicket with my liner brush, added a little bit of my brown. So I'm now making kind of like our twiggy color here for our berries. This is done very free form and you can make your berries as tall into the project or as short into the project as you want. And I kind of just pull and pull and pull. I'm making kind of like little twiggy lines. I'm not making little um, curlicues per se. I'm just adding some stems for our berries. And I am kind of making a straight line, then stopping, making another little straight line and stopping. You can kind of see that there's a little direction change from some of our little twigs there. So just kind of make yourself some little twiggy marks. And then our little berries that are gonna go on there are pure orange, where I'm using my liner brush, loading it with the pure orange. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of red in that brush. So it's a pure orange and red. And I'm just gonna paint tiny little circles. And the berries could be uh, as very full as you want on your little twigs here or as scant as you want, but it's just tiny little circles. And this is a combination, <coughs> excuse me, of pure orange and our red. And the red is apple red. And Okay. What I want to do with this liner brush and the thicket <clears throat> is still using a little bit of water, making our brush or our paint a little bit fluid. This is again thicket and my liner brush with a little bit of water thinning it down. I now want to go back to my leaves and I want to touch the center of my leaves and pull towards the vein. So I'll do it here on this grouping so that you can see up close. Well, thank you. I saw a couple of comments. Y'all are enjoying the class. I'm glad to hear that. I'm gonna start in the middle of each little leaf and I'm just gonna touch down and pull, touch down, pull, touch down, pull. Basically what we're doing is we're connecting these leaves to that center vein. If by chance your leaves, when you painted your little pears, if by chance they didn't completely touch, can you see there, there's just a little detail to those leaves. And what you wanna do is just do that on every single little stem that has this kind of little leaf. So we're touching in the middle and pulling. And you can do all down one side if you want or do them in the pairs. It's a very quick movement. So you can do this very, very quickly. I have this dark green even inside the orangey leaves. Basically, we're just connecting these little leaves to the stem. We'll do the same thing on this one down here, pulling, and this is a darker leaf, so it may not show up as much, but we still want to pull those leaves and connect them to our stems that we painted. And this last little grouping here of these bright oranges, they get the same thing too. So again, the liner brush filled with a little bit of a thinned consistency thicket and I'm starting in the middle of each of the leaves and I'm pulling one leaf at a time towards the center stem and <clears throat> do that for every little pair of leaves coming down to the base here all right I noticed that we still have a little background yet to do so I'm going to clean this number 12 flat brush that I have here I'm gonna dry it really well on my paper towel. And to give us a little bit of darkness in this area here, I'll bring in my sample. You can see it's kind of like green mossy in here. We're going to take that flat brush. Mine's pretty dry. I'm gonna bring a little bit of my thicket off to the side here. And just like we blushed our red here, we're gonna blush some of that green. And you can see I've got very little paint on my brush here. And I'm just gonna start adding some of that to 
like a blush, if you will, around the outside of our pumpkin here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, not a lot. And I'm just kind of squirbling and kind of scratching this paint on here, just to kind of blush in this area here. We still have the red blush on our pumpkin too. So don't forget about that. The center pumpkin, the most forward pumpkin. We were able to blush the one on the back. I'll put a little more darkness behind here in the base of this right there. And just kind of scribble this out, if you will, letting it kind of blend in with the background that you started there. And the red that we were talking about just now, that is the center uh, pumpkin here it needs to have its little rouge of red as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red on my flat brush, very scant amount of paint. And I'm gonna start here at the base and just kind of brush some of this red up, giving a little blush on this pumpkin, same like we did this pumpkin right along the bottom and up into the center don't do the whole strip or the whole section, just a little bit, maybe halfway up and kind of just keeping that brush flat on your surface, let it almost kind of like scrub in, like you're scrubbing its blush on. Most people don't think to put red in a pumpkin, but it just kind of makes the pumpkins look that much more fresh and blush, blushed. All right, and that I'm only blushing these last three, maybe the little bit on this one. I'm not blushing this one because I want that one to still be a bright section compared to the one to the back. The last thing that we're gonna do on our project tonight, if you'd like, is to add a few little trendles. Can you see these little scrolly little lines here, both in the, the base here? I've got two down here, and I have one that comes up this stem and around our bird. To do that, we want our liner brush, we want our paint thinned and fluid so that it flows well. And when I say thinned, what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of water from my brush basin to my puddle here. And I want that paint to flow very, very easily from my paintbrush. So the best thing to do is to practice on a piece of paper off to the side first. Make sure the paint is the right consistency so that you can get nice fluid movement. You're gonna hold that brush straight up and down to your surface, not like you're doing a pen or pencil or, or sometimes when you're painting like this, it's straight up and down and practice. Try and make some circles. Try and make a circle in one direction and then down in another direction then back up in another direction. If you have your brush fully loaded to paint with the proper consistency, you can do several of these little curlicues or little tendrils. And what we're gonna do is, I'll show you on my sample here again. We're gonna start with this one on the pumpkin first. So I'm gonna start down here at the base and I'm just gonna like scroll up and down and around and kind of make some curlicues coming from the base, going out the stem and a little bit even beyond here. So just kind of free form, use light pressure and get that brush straight up and down with paint that's very fluid and then just kind of make these movements just to kind of give yourself a little bit of a little curlicue. Do the same thing down here. I have a curlicue coming out onto this one and I have a curlicue coming up onto our berries. <clears throat> so again, that's with my liner brush and the thicket and just add these little curlicues. <clears throat> You don't think they add a lot, They're, they don't show up. It's not the highlight, it's not the hero of the project, but it really, really, really makes a difference when you see some. All right, once you have your curlicues on there, the next thing to do is to go ahead and sign your name. And I always sign my name by painting my name in. Uh, many people like to use a uh, permanent marker I just spread my, pinker, my finger here into the red. So this is what I'm doing, cleaning up now. Uh, some people like to use colored pencils, but do sign your work, be proud of what you do. If you have painted with me tonight, I do highly recommend that you um, go ahead and share your work. Use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge, Michael's Classes, 
uh, Make It With Michaels and uh, Plaid Crafts. There's four different ones that you can choose from. Be sure and use those when you post socially your finished project. Um, we can go forward on again now if you want, Chanel. <clears throat> I hope you all have enjoyed tonight's class. Um, two pumpkins and a crow. If you have any questions or if by chance it was so fast and maybe you fell behind, know that this class was recorded and it will be posted in the Michaels uh, channel of YouTube within the next day or two. Remember, I did say that earlier that I painted the sides of mine with just black. So if you wanna carry your pumpkin colors around to the back side or use an, an accent color like I did, feel free to do that. Be sure and sign your work and share it. And I really appreciate each and every one of you attending the class tonight. And I wanna share with you before we say goodnight, our next class at Michael's is gonna be taught by Andy Jones. And it is this pumpkin painting. It's done on a 12 by 12 clear primed linen canvas. And that's gonna be this coming Wednesday. So not tomorrow, but the next day. And um, I believe it's four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So that would be three o'clock Central Time here at, for Michael's time. Um, so we appreciate each and every one of you. Chris, Thank you we for have, it. Um, oh, one sorry. Last, one last minute question, Chris. Oh, I, was gonna, yeah. I was gonna answer it myself, but I feel like you will actually be able to answer, answer it faster than I can type it. Um, okay. What is the palette paper that you're working on? And also, um, are you using folk art brushes that are in a set? or individual? Okay, um, first let's cover the palette paper. The palette paper that I'm working with is actually a pad of palette paper. This is a waxed paper palette. It's white in color. The top surface that I'm working with is waxed. This is the best kind of palette I like for working with acrylics. It's disposable on the pad. You could just tear it off at the end of each painting session or keep it and keep and continue painting until your whole palette has been um, uh, dirtied or messed up. Uh, but it is disposable. So it tears off of the pad. You can fold it in half and then throw it away. Um, I love a wax paper palette. I use it all the time. I don't like styrofoam plates and I don't like using uh, plastic plates or even a pane of glass. I know a lot of people use those. I don't like to do all the cleanup that it takes to do that sort of thing. So I prefer a wax paper palette to answer your question. They're easily found in all the craft stores and I'm sure Michaels has a wonderful selection of wax paper palettes. Um, the second question about the brushes I was using tonight, I happen to be using a set of brushes that Plaid manufactures and they are the uh, value pack brushes that are under the label Folk Art One Stroke. Those happen to be some great paint brushes, and that's what I was using tonight. Any other questions, Stephen? No, I think everybody is just saying how they enjoyed the class and love the painting and are um, excited to paint it if they haven't done so with us tonight. Okay. I just saw a question, what size canvas? This was an 8 by 10. So if you yeah, weren't painting with me tonight and you want to paint along, it, this one is an 8 by 10. The canvas for Wednesday with Andy is a 12 by 12 clear primed linen canvas. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I cannot wait to see your projects. Be sure and use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. Join our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid. Andy and I teach there all the time, and we'd love to have you come join us there as well. Thank you, Chanel, for Michaels, too, for being on with us tonight. And thank you, Stephen, for being our moderator. Goodbye, Absolutely. everybody. Bye.